Astronauts to the moon. <laughs> Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. We have a on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. 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 <laughs> What's going on, everyone? It's Jaronism back with another video for you today, tonight, or this morning, wherever you might be. It's a live video, so thank you for joining me for what I hope to be the start of something long-lasting and beneficial. My hope is to start doing a daily show, maybe an hour in length. This way I can cover more topics. So I still want to do my more featured videos, so my videos will still be coming. But when I have some time, um, I think that I want to keep these short, and this way it covers, you know, my list is growing of videos I want to do, and at this point I realize I'll never be able to do them all. So I figure the easiest way to do this would be to go live daily. Can't tell you a time yet because I'm not really sure, but uh, if you have any suggestions, you may leave that in the comment section if you've you know, got a time that works for you. I don't know, trying to figure out how to do this all, so we shall see. But thank you if you're in the chat room for joining me, or if you're watching this some other time, thank you for watching. Appreciate that a ton. And um, I hope that I can take some questions, maybe at the end of the show, but we'll see how each one goes. But for now, this is just the first of what I hope to be many. And today's topic is going to be on Virgin Galactic. I'm sure you know who they are. That's Richard Branson's company. And so Richard Branson is... Um, like I said, the owner of the Virgin Galactic. And he also has a CEO, and if you don't know who that is, his name is George Whitesides, George T. Whitesides. And George uh, was the former uh, deputy or head deputy uh, behind Charles Bolden at NASA. So that's an interesting little case. But we're going to start out talking about Richard Branson. Uh, the guy is a piece of work. If you need to know, you know, what kind of exciting things are going on over at Spaceport USA, he's doing things like scaling the wall, drinking a bottle of champagne. Um, you can find him online picking up many women for some reason and touching women, just being a strange guy altogether. But he is rich, and is he using his riches in the right way? Well, that's up to you to decide. He is definitely, like I said, a strange individual. Uh, here we see him with uh, Al Gore. Um, he is a big pusher on this whole idea of climate change. So if that tells you something about him, it definitely tells me something about him. Um, but yeah, the guy's, uh, basically broke the, not, not on and of himself, but, uh, the state of New Mexico, which is one of the poorest states that there is period. Uh, they gave him the entire $183 million to build Spaceport USA. So, which is a lot of money, and he promised them thousands of jobs, and all these celebrities would be coming by to purchase tickets and stay in nearby hotels and spend money in gift shops. And, of course, nothing like that has come to fruition yet. Uh, he's also started Virgin Money, and I'm going to play a video now for you and wonder if you agree or don't agree that uh, there's definitely some occult symbolism behind this video, so... Let's check that out.
We've come a long, long way over the last 40 years with a simple aim of making things better. And now our quest takes us into banking. Virgin money, 40 years of better, now in a bank. <laughs> Did you catch the end there? I wonder if I can show that again. Uh, the hot air balloon was going up, but it hit a glass ceiling and kind of kept trying to get out of the glass ceiling by bouncing, but uh, couldn't quite get out. So I thought that was interesting. Um, also, I wanted to just kind of point out, you know, what this guy has done or who he is, basically. And Richard Branson is um, an English business uh, magnet, if you will, an investor, philanthropist. He founded the Virgin Group, which controls 400 companies. Um, he was knighted at Buckingham Palace uh, for his service to entrepreneurship, for his work in retail and music and transport. And he's one of the most prominent figures in British culture. Uh, in January 2016, Forbes listed Branson's estimated net worth at $5.2 billion. Uh, no small sum at all. His grandfather, the Right Honorable Sir George Arthur Harwin Branson, was a judge of the High Court of Justice and a privy counselor. Um, so he definitely comes from a, I guess, a family of nobility, if you will. Uh, he did start his record business, as I'm sure you know all about that, uh, Virgin Records, which he ended up selling, but then uh, acquired a bunch of other businesses and has gone into healthcare. He owns Virgin Healthcare and also uh, has some trains. So if you saw in that last segment, the trains uh, going around, he purchased a bunch of trains in the UK. Um, but basically, the thing I want to be talking about is the orbital space launch system or the whole idea behind Spaceport USA and Virgin Galactic, which is basically uh, told people that he's going to be selling tickets to space. But really what it is is just a parabolic flight. Um, this craft will take off, if it ever happens, and then we'll release a, a rocket-powered craft from beneath it and we'll see, let me see if I can bring up this video of the actual flight plan. So this is the Virgin Galactic flight plan, uh, what they expect to happen. I'm gonna turn down this volume here so I can talk. So basically this is the, uh, the, you know, the mothership as they call it. A lot of occult symbology throughout this whole thing that they do. And if you wanna know how successful it is to start, um, this company was founded in 2004, so we're looking at 13 years, uh, but he started talking about it in 98, so we're almost at 20 years now when he was discussing it, and basically he's been talking about uh, sending these people, at first it was supposed to be at uh, 350,000 feet, um, but now they've scaled that way back, but like I said, you go up, it drops you out, then it shoots you up into so-called space, which would have to be above the 60-mile mark, which is the Kármán line. Um, but I don't think that they even claim that they're going to do that anymore. There is quite a few people who have asked for their money back and luckily got it. Um, because basically he now claims that they have 700 people who have purchased um, seats on this flight. And if that is true, and if anybody from Virgin Galactic is listening, I challenge you to please uh, go ahead and, and release that list of people who have paid you, because I tend to doubt that uh, 700 people have given somebody who's never proven a thing uh, $250,000. Um, but getting back to how successful this is, he has so far done four powered flights. So we're talking 20 years. He's done four powered flights, and he's killed murdered people are dead four people so in four powered flights you've got four dead people uh, that is not a good rate and i cannot see somebody giving him two dollars let alone two hundred and fifty dollars uh two hundred fifty thousand dollars to get a ticket on this death trap which is basically if would you ever get on something if uh, somebody told you oh, yeah we ran this particular ride at disneyland four times and only four people have died doubt anybody would ever get on that ride again um, yet he's supposedly still selling tickets. Pretty crazy. So, yeah, basically this is the whole trip. The whole trip takes like 30 minutes. $250,000 is a joke. For that much money, you'd be able to build yourself a, a, a balloon that could take you equal height, and you'd be by yourself, and you constructed the whole thing. I mean, you'd probably spend a lot less than a quarter of a million dollars, 
And if he has sold 700 tickets, that's $175 million for something he's never proven even once can be done. So pretty crazy. Um, let's look at also, and we'll bring this up. We're going to watch a little segment of Bill Nye. And I did want to put this up there because I thought it was hilarious. Uh, you can't quite see as low as I can. But um, if you have been watching Bill Nye's recent show and seen the blow up around uh, this whole stupid Bill Nye wrecks the world program, mm -hmm. um, the my sex junk section was the worst thing I've ever seen. But as of yesterday, I thought the thumbs up and thumbs down was hilarious. It is, and this is yesterday, so I'm sure it's changed by today, but it has 1,514 thumbs up to 89,293 thumbs down. So that's a 89 to 1 um, thumbs down versus thumbs up ratio, which is pretty hilarious. So what we're going to be watching now is this is George T. Whitesides. He is the CEO of Virgin Galactic. Again, he came from NASA where he was the uh, deputy administrative head and, uh, you know, second basically in charge to Charles Bolden before he came over. And what we're going to be watching is a conversation that he had with Bill Nye on the show. I just want you to watch this guy and see if you see what I see. He's an, He looks like a villain. He's an absolute, uh, he's got this smirk on his face. So let's watch that. We're going to put it into the, um, eh, I'll put it in the smaller screen probably. So we'll bring that up and go ahead and have a listen. Resources and Dr. Michelle Thaler from NASA itself. So the guy we're looking at is here on the left. Um, just watch the smirk on his face. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for taking the time. We're living at an extraordinary time. Absolutely. Uh, where space exploration is being done by governments, and it's being done by you guys. So, George, let's start with you. You want to sell tickets. Yeah, we've sold about 700. So tell this little smirk just drives me crazy. I mean, this guy looks like he would steal from your wallet right in front of your face and, and just smile about it. Oh, so your company is Virgin Galactic, right? Yeah, yeah, With Richard Branson Space Company. Yeah, yeah, it's Richard Branson Space Company. You've heard of it. Oh, that one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you are uh, planning to fly when? Uh, when, we're, when we're ready. You know? We'll fly when we're ready. Okay, don't worry about who you give your money to. We take your money and we fly when we are ready. No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that's never been done before, right? We're trying to open space up to you and to you yeah, and to it, you. By the way, yeah, and I'm, all I'm... you. I mean, that's what we want to do. Who wants to go to space? Who wants to go to space? Which is something they don't even claim they're going to do anymore. Um, because they can't get that high. And, of course, we should know that. You should know how the planes operate, how they work, how they fly. And once you get up that high... Um, there's no more atmosphere. And if there's no more atmosphere, well, then everything changes. How do you steer a vehicle without atmosphere to steer against? And there's just no way to do what they are claiming they can do. And in the times they've tried to even get up to a certain level, the plane breaks up into a million pieces because, well, that's what happens when you <laughs> are trying to do something that you can't do. So let's continue on. It's hard, and we got to do it right. So we'll we'll fly when we're ready, but soon. Soon. Yeah. Uh, well, in space exploration, soon is less than ten years, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And way sooner than that. Way yeah, sooner. Way sooner. Now. Way sooner than that. And the uh, what we're going to be going over here in a few seconds is how many times they've told us exactly when they'll be flying. Now, if I were going to buy a ticket, yeah. What would it set me back? Well, for you, Bill. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, our, our price is uh, $250,000. All right. Quarter million, and we fly in space. Yeah, what I like to say is um, right now, NASA's buying tickets from the Russians for about, I don't know, what is it, $80 million each? Which is classic. So if you don't know that, I think it's hugely important. NASA had these space shuttles. They had six of them. Two of them blew up, so they had four left. And all four have been retired and put into museums. And now NASA pays $81 million a seat to fly on Soyuz rockets to the ISS, which, again, I'm not saying I believe that. But I do believe that the money transfers hands, and it's all just a money-stealing um, system. 
But $81 million per seat, you know, that's times three people. If they're sending three up, well, usually they only send one or two Americans. And that is ridiculous because we had a space shuttle. We had a craft that could fly from Earth into orbit, connect with the ISS, and they just got rid of them. So if anybody believes that horse stuff, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. There's no possible way that any company would ever do that. How could it have cost that much money to repair whatever the issues were with the shuttle? It wouldn't have cost more than $81 million a person to keep those things going. But instead, they're now in museums. So $250,000, it's a lot of money, obviously. But we're going to bring that cost down over time. Uh, now, you had some trouble. Yeah, yeah. We, we, had, a, we had a test flight accident. And, uh, you know, space is, space is hard. And uh, it's, it's not easy to open up the space frontier, right? It's like... We live in a world where we see all this science fiction all, all, all over the planet, but... How is it not easy to open up the space frontier if NASA already knows how to go? NASA knows how to go to space, so shouldn't they just be telling people? Or is that like a secret? NASA keeps the secret and then tells these corporations, yeah, go ahead and go to space and try and figure it out. But we already know everything, but uh, even though you are the taxpayers that paid for it, we're not going to tell you the secrets. It's ridiculous. If that's the case, then NASA's responsible for those four people's deaths. And you sort of think that starships are cruising all over the place. But actually, we live in one of the most exciting moments in human history when we're actually opening up the, the space frontier for the first time. And, and, and that opening is hard. It's really hard. And sometimes you have challenges, but you got to just uh, keep plugging away and, and, uh, because it re really matters. It's going to be really important to the future of the world. Very cool. Now, Chris. You're trying to make money in space too, right? We're trying to expand the economy into space so that we have more reasons to send more people. And so I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here because I want you to see this guy breaks out a meteorite and passes it to um, Bill Nye. And then he passes it down to Whitesides and watch the look on Whitesides' face here. Dr. Whitesides to have a look. And uh, what's interesting about this is not only is it beautiful, but it's an object that originated in space at this one so I'm going to transfer this onto the big screen here so you can see this. Oh, I'm not very lined up. One second. Bring it down a little bit. That's a little better. Um, yeah, look at this guy's face here. Watch this. Landed in Europe. This is his response to looking at a meteorite. That is hilarious. The guy doesn't believe it more than I do. That originated in space. This one landed in Europe. He's laughing. And because He's Laughing at this guy's meteorite, which I would do the same thing. Um, and then here we'll watch him again, just as he makes comments here at the end. Uh, we actually, I would say we already are. Uh, yeah. the, what we're doing today would not be possible without 50 years of space exploration. And with Tree on Earth, uh, we figure out how to scale it and amplify it and turn it into a marketplace. Yeah, 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 no, no, we're really excited about that. We've got, uh, people think of, um, our, uh, spaceship as sort of like for humans, uh, to have fun, and, and they will. They'll have an amazing, amazing time. But also to be a great platform for, uh, for experiments and for technologists to get something up into zero gravity and to have some thing that they'll learn or to look out the window and see the moon or stars or other things like that. And they'll be able to do it dramatically cheaper than they could uh, with other ways. And so we're really excited about it as a science. So, so you guys, who's better, private or public? Who's, is, is the public inefficient? So, pretty funny, indeed. And let me just go over some more stuff here as far as that goes. And talking about white sides and all these things that they are saying they're going to do. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through a list of um, that I have here of some various, basically, claims that they've made along the way. These aren't in any particular order, so you know, bear with me on that. Um, but basically, I'm just going to tell you some claims that they've made so this is um, Virgin employees have been researching the feasibility of offering space flights for about 100,000 each as soon as 2009. So that was 2009 was supposed to start. Um, wealthy baby boomers who saw Neil Armstrong walk on the moon 30 years ago would be willing to pay tens of thousands of dollars to experience space travel. That was in May of 99. Richard Branson, a ruler of the Virgin Empire, is planning a hotel in space and has registered a company, Virgin Galactic Airways, to fly guests into orbit. We're looking at various things that could enable people to go to space for a reasonable price, he told internetters last week. I hope in five years, a reusable rocket will have been developed, which we can take 10 people at a time to stay at the Virgin Hotel for two weeks. That was in 1999. 
We've got uh, Virgin Galactic said 100 people have already paid 200000 to fly into space. The, they include actress Victoria Principal. I've also heard Tom Hanks. I've also heard, um, who else was there? The One of the Spice Girls. Um, can't remember, Britney Spears. Um, can't remember who else there was. Um, but he was going to start. She looked forward to being the first civilian flight of Virgin Galactic, perhaps as soon as 2008. That was in 2005. Virgin Galactic plans to operate its initial flights from the Mojave base and ahead of the projected opening of the New Mexico spaceport in late 2009 or early 2010. Um, let's see, that was in 2005 by the Associated Press. We got here, airline mogul and adventurer Richard Branson announced plans Monday to boldly go where no private transport company has gone before into space. It was going to offer commercial space flights by 2007 with Branson himself joining the inaugural journey. That was in 2004. Thrill seekers are plunking down six figures to ride rockets that haven't even been built yet. And a new airline called Virgin Galactic promises to be up and soaring in the next three years. Notice promising. That was in 2004. Uh, Branson and some family members will make the first passenger flight in mid-2009. Regular flights will follow. The plan is to fly once a week for the first year and twice a week after that, eventually down to twice a day. Over time, Virgin Galactic hopes to drop its ticket price to $50,000. Uh, that was in 2007. Stephen Attenborough, Virgin Galactic's astronaut liaison, reassured the founders in an email that the accident's impact on the first commercial space flights expected in late 2009 or 2010 will be minimal and that it was business as usual. Killing people, I guess, is business as usual. That was in 2007. We've got uh, Governor Bill Richardson and others are preparing to break ground Friday on the construction of the new terminal. Some say, or some 250 people are lining up to pay 200000 each to take the trip as early as next year. That was in 2009. Branson hopes to begin passenger flights out of New Mexico sometime in 2011 after a series of rigorous safety tests. That was in 2009. If the plans of people like Sir Richard Branson of Virgin Galactic are accurate in the next three to five years, there will be very frequent space tourism launches, said Scott Hubbard, a professor of astronautics and aeronautics at Stanford University. That was in 2010. Seeing a trend yet? Uh, Virgin Chief Branson has put a time frame on his plan to launch tourists into space, claiming he and his family will braze the trail for hundreds of fare-pairing passengers by blasting off in December 2013. That was in June of 2013. According to Virgin Galactic founder Richard Branson, the firm is putting its final touches on cabin, in cabin interiors, flight suits, and training programs, among other details. They are on track to begin commercial service out of Spaceport America in 2014. That was in 2013. Um, here we've got Virgin Galactic's Richard Branson. As many companies has already booked more than 300 suborbital flights. The company hopes to complete its test phase and begin launching flights next year. That was in 2011. Governments are not going to be running the future of space travel. Uh, private enterprise is. He's right. Virgin Galactic's Branson plans to begin regular launches into low Earth orbit next year. Other companies are looking even beyond the moon, 2011. Uh, we're very, very close now with the spaceport finished, with the mothership finished, with the spaceship finished, and with the final tests going on to starting commercial space trip, spaceship travel, the Virgin boss Richard Branson said. Although billed as his official opening, final tests will not be complete until the end of 2012, with flights starting soon after. That was in 2011. And that is the same image. Virgin Galactic already has 100 people who have paid 200000 apiece. Says it begins to, it hopes to begin in 2008. That was in 2006. Uh, the buzz is about Virgin Galactic, the fledgling space line founded by British airline mogul Sir Richard Branson. Um, says here that Beatty was in Los Angeles at a space conference this spring, hyping a flight he expects to take in 2008. The program still awaits federal approval and completion of its rocket ship. That was in 2006. Here we've got a rollout a year after the deadly accident at Rutan's test site marks a rigorous flight test program of, and that space tourism advocates hope will climax with the first suborbital, suborbital joyrides by the end of the decade. More than 250 wannabe astronauts have paid 200000 or put down deposits for a chance to float in weightlessness, at least this person says, for a mere five minutes. That was in 2008. So again, they said that people would be going up by the end of that decade, which was 2010. <clears throat> Maybe you could say 2011. Uh, with over 500 passengers having thrown down 20000 deposit on a $200,000 flight, 
Whitesides has said that Galactic is roughly on track for a late 2013 commercial launch, and we just saw them say they'll fly when they're ready. So this is not something that a normal company would ever do for fear of the backlash from people who purchase tickets. This company should be uh, ostracized in the media. Rather, they are glorified. During an industry roundtable at Albuquerque International Sunsport, Mark Butler of Virgin Galactic said New Mexico used to top the list of states for aerospace development because of its spaceport, where Virgin Galactic hopes to begin commercial space flights next year. That was October of 2012. And we've got this one. Virgin Galactic, um, did I already read this one? I think I did. So basically you get the point that they are doing this. And I stopped in 2013. I didn't even continue looking up claims that they've made in 2014, 2015, 2016. But you should remember, it's basically all the same thing. They keep saying the same thing. They keep delaying it. They keep pushing it out. It'll be next year. It'll be next year. It'll be next year. But they actually will never go anywhere close. And I think it's ultimately just a business ploy. The more he can get that name Virgin out there for every reason possible, that he'll keep doing it. And because people are so in love with space, they give him all the leniency you would give anybody. And that's the whole problem. Um, here you can see an image of him and his best friend Obama. Very great, very great. And uh, yes, um, let me just go over some of the problems that I see with um this whole idea of virgin galactic now they've sent up like i said four powered flights one of the things that they have not given us in any way is we've never seen te telemetry data for any any of it which is just ridiculous that uh, you wouldn't have telemetry data if you're going to require money from people to sign up to go on this trip but yet nobody can even see where you, where you, what you're doing or where you're going um, there's actually no footage of any of the flights released to the public and the ones that do get released, um, they're edited, they're limited. They only span a couple of minutes in duration. Uh, they look to be CGI, um, heavily CGI. One second here. There we go. Okay. We've also got the uh, whole idea of the feathering technique that they use, the aerodynamic positioning with the, uh, feathering technique. It's not even achievable because there's no atmosphere and there's no evidence of any kind of real pitch or yaw thrusters in any video that would prove that what they're saying can be done is even possible. Um, think about thermal heat transfer. I've seen uh, the X-14 and other crafts, the Blackbird, when they come back, they are burnt to a crisp and the thermal heat transfer and the damage uh, when they're coming back from the so-called uh, or going through the atmosphere is not evident on any of the crafts that had supposedly landed from doing the exact same work. There's not even damage to the paintwork. And the wings also don't adhere to the contour of high-speed aircraft like the X-15 or the SR-71 or even the Concorde, which had that leading edge or the leading nose had to be uh, almost like a cone. They don't show us any of that for a craft that supposedly has to do the same thing. The uh, SR-71 was made with um, basically titanium skin panels and they had to have all movable joints to accommodate the expansion and the contraction with the temperature changes the sr-71 they say grew um, by several inches even at mach 3 so again think of how fast they say that uh, these crafts are going like these rockets that they're sending to the iss they have to get going 17,500 miles per hour so if you think they're going that fast then they must be growing and shrinking tons of inches and would be getting very hot it's just not humanly possible to do what we have been told they do, yet 95% of the world believes it. Uh, Spaceport America is located on a military installation zone in the Mojave Desert, so you can't even get on there. Access is restricted. The flight footage mimics all limited lighting and view angles as that of preliminary computer animations uh, released to the public preceding the entire project. So basically everything we get telling us that it's real footage mocks the it's identical to the CGI footage that we got before they ever even claimed to go. Uh, digital enhancements, um, th they're obvious. The whole idea of like a matte background and unnatural lighting, uh, the positioning, the cropping. And it looks like they are using, well, the scaled composites, if you've heard of that company. Um, they are an amateur and unsafe lab conditions. That's what caused the explosion in 2007 that took the lives of three. Um, they basically have no single component or part data. We can't even look at, uh, at least 
SpaceX, for the most part, they give us a list of everything that's included on their rockets. We can't even get that at all for Virgin Galactic. Um, basically, what you get is just computer simulations telling everybody it's real, it's going to happen, just wait, it's coming. The problem is people need to realize that this is not going to happen. And at what point do people call a spade a spade and call this guy out for being a fraud? And they don't. The guy's got his own um, island. If you didn't know that, he lives on his own island. Uh, basically, his business empire is owned by a complicated series of offshore trusts and companies. The Sunday Times stated that his wealth is calculated at three billion pounds, which is about uh, four or five million, five billion U.S. Um, if he were to retire to his Caribbean island and liquidate all of this, he would pay relatively little in tax, which is crazy. Um, Branson has been criticized for his business strategy and has been accused of being a carpetbagger. Branson reported that he is living on Necker Island for health reasons rather than for tax reasons, but uh, that's obviously untrue. Um, he's also a Star Trek fan. I thought this was pretty funny that he named his new spaceship the VSS Enterprise in honor of Star Trek space trips, spaceships. And in an interview with, um, or in an interview, he reportedly offered actor William Shatner a ride on the inaugural space launch of Virgin Galactic. But in an interview in Time magazine, Shatner claimed that Branson approached him and asked how much he would be willing to pay for a ride on the spaceship. And in response, Shatner asked him, how much would you be willing to pay me to do it? I thought that's funny because uh, Shatner kind of putting him in his place like, uh, dude, you pay me to go on your little ship. I don't, I don't pay for that stuff. And that's just Shatner. Like, it's not even somebody who is rich and famous. I thought it was funny. Um, but basically, the guy is just bad news all over. And Whiteside, I showed you him. He completely seems um, like a villain, like somebody who's lying to your face. And that's obvious because I think that he is. So do not buy into this whole hype. And you can go on the Internet and find tons of companies. I'm trying to think of the company I found yesterday, World Travels. Uh, I think that's the name of it. Let me see if I can find you the exact name before I get it wrong. But this company that I found, um, I'm kind of looking into them because they supposedly are launching balloons that are going to be taking people up. Well, what did I learn? Well, I learned that um, Mark Kelly is the the head of this company. And Mark Kelly is, of course, the uh, husband to um, the lying and cheating and you know Gabby Giffords, who's pretending to be mentally handicapped. So don't think that's really somebody that uh, should be heading any companies and promising to take people to space. Pretty funny, too, that he um, keeps saying in this interview I was watching that uh, people will get to see the ball earth. It would be they'll get to go up and see the round earth. It's round. They got to see that it's round. I just find that funny. So that's what I wanted to basically cover is this company is nonsense. Um, here you see a flight plan, um, but basically they... It's just a parabolic flight. You can go on a parabolic flight like zero, um, zero G for 5,000 bucks. So why would you pay 250,000 just to go with six people and basically do the same thing and get less time? These flights, when you see them getting up here where they say the edge of space is at 360,000 feet, this plane up here was completely unsafe at this point because, again, you can't turn. If there's no atmosphere to turn against, how do you tell the craft to turn? I guess you could ask NASA since they claim to do it all the time, but let's talk realistically here and let's pretend NASA is nonsense, which they are, and just talk about this flight and these ideas here. When you got up into zero atmosphere, you would not be able to turn anymore. You would not be able to even know what direction you were. And that is so integral because if you're going through the atmosphere coming back, you have to be perfect, even by NASA's standards, or else you will burn up. So... I do not think that they'll be putting any passengers on this plane uh, ever. And when it comes back, it just falls down and they raise these little wings. And when they do that, supposedly it will basically coast down and will cause five minutes of weightlessness. But I believe you get 30 seconds of weightlessness 15 times if you go on a parabolic flight like zero G, um, which would be more than that. You'd get more than five minutes. You'd get about seven and a half minutes of total weightlessness so why anybody in the world would pay 250,000 for this pff, you got me but I would like to see uh, Virgin Galactic release a list of the celebrities that have so supposedly paid 250,000 to uh, get a ticket on something that's never been proven if um, you know somebody some company myself and my wife whatever 
took $250,000 from somebody and promised something uh, 10 years ago and hadn't delivered it yet, we'd be in jail. And we rightfully should. Um, there's no reason why you should lie to customers. And every time this guy does something, comes out with some new idea, he gets put right up in front and center. He gets shows on or gets shown on Jimmy Kimmel, gets shown on Jimmy Fallon, um, goes on all these shows, shows up in the news and the media, newspapers, magazines, as if he's some sort of hero. And it should just go to show you that um, basically if you're rich in this world, you can get away with murder. And I don't mean that uh, figuratively. Um, let's see here what else we've got. Uh, so, yeah, we talked about white sides. You can look into his dad as well, um, who was also he's still alive, I believe. His dad is um, a teacher. And let's see what else I've got for Virgin Galactic. Uh, like I said, he does have many supporters that have fallen by the wayside, that have um, decided that they no longer want to support the program um, because there's just so many, so many reports coming out now. Pat Hines, the director of the New Mexico Space Grant Consortium, said that Branson is unlikely to take any tours to space until 2019. I believe they just came out with a video recently saying that they're going to do it in 2018. Like I said, there's no use in even watching that stuff anymore. They've already proven themselves to be nothing more than liars. Um, somebody says here, I don't believe he's a Bernie Madoff figure, uh, referring to the convicted fraudster behind a $65 billion Ponzi scheme. Um, customers who have asked for their money back have gotten it back immediately. Uh, I hope so. Um, but they said, this is just an article from this year saying, but we're looking at another four years. So, I mean, w what is going on that is causing them to put that kind of timeline on things? And why would you have white sides go on Bill Nye's program and state that well, we'll fly when we're ready? No, tell people the truth. And if you can't do that, then you're just a fraud to start with. And that's what I think basically they are, is nothing more than a fraud. Um, let's see here what else I've got. Um, this is a, oh, sorry, I'm not showing you that, am I? Okay. And also I wanted to, I do have some time to take some questions. So if, and I'll bring up the chat here in a second, if you've got a question for me, again, I always say the best place to ask me questions, if you've got a question for me is to go to ask.fm slash Um, so far to date, and I'm not claiming this will be this way forever. But so far to date, I have answered every single question, even some that are not um, related to my research subjects. But if you ask it there, I will answer it. Um, and I usually answer them within a day or two, or I'll get back to you. Um, but that so far is the easiest way for me to uh, answer questions. Sometimes in my emails, I'm still getting, you know, 50 a day. And many of them are like several paragraphs I've got to you know, read through. People are telling me their life story, which I love. You know, I just got one the other day from somebody who said that um, they thought their life was uh, worthless and that they were a stay-at-home father and just uh, didn't do anything. And because of my videos and other people talking about the same thing and explaining our opinions of the world, that he has completely turned his life around, says he's now got a job that's paying 50000 a year and now believes in a creator where before he didn't. So those are the kind of things that, um, I don't know, they make me happy. So if you got a question in the chat, do me a favor and put question in all capital letters and then put your question after that and I'll try and get to a couple of those. Hey, thank you guys so much. Oh, I just pulled this up. I see some people have donated money. I appreciate that a ton. Um, and now I'll read those questions first, definitely. Uh, Ken Clinton, thank you so much. Appreciate it a ton. Wog Fun, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Patricia, thank you so much. Um, 118 EAL, thank you so much. Delta 9, Space Bubbles. <laughs> so if any of you guys have a question, please let me know. Um, and I appreciate it a ton. You know, my goal is at this point to, um, you know, try and do this research and stuff uh, full time and hopefully you know, people can support me. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to do that. <clears throat> but I don't think there's such a problem with anybody who's donating. I would never ask for anything, um, as far as, or demand payment for my videos. My videos will always be free. My content will always be free. Um, that's something I vowed from the very beginning and I will not be changing that. But again, I think, uh, Infinite Plain Society has done a great video recently where he talked about the, um, whole idea behind what Tim Osmond has a problem with and, says that we're doing this for money, we're stealing money. 
and it's nothing of the sort. And if people want to put their money into people trying to change the world rather than back into a system that is a B system, that is a system of fraud and a, a system of making the rich get richer while the poor get poor, um, which is basically what they're doing. So thank you so much, Ken Clinton. You're awesome. That is super awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it more than I can say. Missa does too. Um, it's been the you know best time of our life, to be honest with you. Um, I feel so much better about my own personal beliefs once I accepted the fact that I may have been lied to and started looking for my own truth. Um, and it's not always easy to find. You know, there's a lot of people who think finding truth is search, just searching on Google and whatever the answer says, that's your answer. And while I do a lot of searches on Google, I do a lot of um, Wikipedia research um, because those things are all a part of the whole plate. And you can't just take one source. You have to look at several different places. And in doing that, that's where you find the lies. That's where you find the confusion. Um, things like finding out that space can't do a three-body problem was huge for me. Um, finding out that uh, you know all the authors throughout throughout time, or at least the last hundred years, that have said that the Earth has never been proven to be spinning. Well, that is the truth. But if you go looking in any kind of you know um, astronomy website, or you go just searching on Google, well, what do you think you're going to find if it's a deception? I mean, do you really think you're going to find somewhere that says Surprise, you've been fooled. No, what you're going to find is the going narrative, what they've been pushing, what they want you to believe. And then you're going to have to look a little bit extra to find the truth. And when you find authors like Hawking, like Einstein, like um, Julian Barber, you know, when you find these people saying things like it has never been proven that the earth spins um, or that it moves at all, that's when you can kind of start drawing your own conclusions. And that's when you put together a better representation of your reality than the one given to you. So yeah, is there thousands upon thousands of people that would call me an idiot? Absolutely. Why? Because they think that truth is simply what you've been told or what you've been taught and that there is no other truth. There couldn't possibly be. And they don't know how to search to find out if that's the case because they say, what well, would it be a fruitless search? They think, why would I search and find things that People are not telling me the truth when I can find people who are telling me the truth. Well, the problem in that lies when the people telling you the truth are hiding some things from you, which is exactly the case in astronomy and cosmology. It absolutely, without a doubt, they are hiding the truth from you. And so make sure you um, do your due diligence before you just believe things. And I think that's something that I feel unfortunate that I wasn't able to do. Um, you know, and I've also got people, you know, uh, check out Monday Night Raw uh, on Monday nights on TFR. It is free for the entire first week. So again, that stuff's all free. Three-hour show my wife and I do. And in the last two of the last four weeks, we had Jordan Maxwell on. I'm sure you guys know who he is. Um, and in having Jordan Maxwell on, I, I'm probably not going to have him anymore just because I wasn't really a big fan of something he said at the end. But listening to him talk is is, is funny because he tells you all of his research. He gives you all the things that he's found, but there's people out there that say, Oh, he's a Mason. You got to watch out. Oh, this guy's works for Satan. Well, I'm not afraid of things like that, that, um, I'm able to look at somebody's information and look at what they tell me and bring it into my mind and decide if it meets my, my observations. And if it does, then I can keep it. And if it doesn't, then I throw it away. So I hear people say, Oh, Jordan Maxwell is talking about universes and he's talking about billions of light years and billions of years yes he is because in his world in his research he still sees the earth as a ball suspended in space i don't hold that against anybody so i certainly will take what he says and i pull some things in and others i leave when he talks about them digging in the ground and finding artifacts from three billion years ago well i just rework that by my observations which are there is no three billion years and so does it mean that people were here a lot longer than us. I agree. I think that that is true. I don't know how old the earth is. I don't know how old people are. Um, unfortunately, we've been lied to in every way about our, our history. And so I don't know those things. Um, awesome. Thank you, John five or 54 day. You guys are awesome. James Chamberlain. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. Morgan Ellis. You guys are sweet. That is awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm going to check back and see if there's any questions over in the other chat here. 
so let me see here what we've got so give me one second um, is also paid to do these videos okay yeah if you've got that kind of stuff to say while well, you're just you're out of your mind you don't know what you're saying um, I don't know who thinks that anybody's paying me one thing I've said and I think it's great it's on my website um, where I've made several promises maybe I'll bring that up real quick let's go there so you don't have to watch this uh, Virgin Galactic eyeball anymore <clears throat> so let me see here where is my browser okay I'll transition over here so I'll just show you real quick um, something I have on my site because I think it's important and it's something I stand behind and will stand behind and let's see here so we're just going to my site which uh, usually doesn't look this bad it just doesn't fit on my screen right now um where is it oh, that didn't work okay doesn't like my small browser here um, it is under support I believe alrighty I swear it usually is not this bad let me spread this thing out a little bit I have a shrunk down screen that's why there we go now it looks good um, okay so it's just a, a kind of a, pr a promise that I made myself and people because I think that's important to kind of put your your morals out there the way you feel um, and basically my promises are uh, that I promise that I work for no one. I'm not paid by any government, any faction, any group, or any agency. Um, if anybody's ever donated money, and this happened early on, real early on, that somebody uh, donated like 100 bucks, which is a ton. You know, I usually don't see anything like that. And when they did, the next email I got from them was a list of videos that they wanted me to do. And I told them, oh, I actually do my own videos and the guy says oh well if i'm going to be supporting you you know i, I want to be giving the topics that you'll cover in research and i told him you know i'd rather can i give you that hundred back and he said yes so i returned the hundred bucks because i wasn't going to do his um and he apologized about a month later but just said that he had chosen to do something else with his donation money so but anyway i just that's one important thing to me i'm not going to let people dictate what i talk about uh, which is also cool about uh, Truth Frequency Radio. Um, you know, Truth Frequency Radio, uh, when they offered me a, a, a radio show, I talked to my wife and we both decided that um, probably not because we didn't think that working for a radio station that would tell you what you can talk about would be something that we'd want to be a part of. And when he called back, I just told Chris, um, what is the content rules? What are?" And he said, there is none, that uh, you have 100% control over your content. And you can ask Mark Sargent, you can ask Rob Skiba, you can ask Seth Garcia, you can ask, um, you know, uh, what's his name over there? Zach, I was going to call him Zach Galifianakis. Zach Galifianakis, <laughs> Zach Hubbard, other people who have shows on TFR, and they'll tell you the same thing, that there is no content rules um, at all. Uh, second one, I promise that we are a simple husband and wife, that our names are Jaron and Melissa Campanella, and that we love to research and are on a mission to uncover the truth. Third promise was I promised that we are the only ones who decide which videos to make and which topics to cover. And that is very true. Um, I don't let anybody else tell me what topics to cover. It's all me. I promise that I will always report my true feelings and my findings and will use my videos to show how I reached those conclusions by showing our own real research. So uh, I'm not just watching other people's videos and then repeating that. I've actually heard people claim that that's what I'm doing. Um, I actually don't even have time to watch many other videos because I'm doing my own research and reading books. And so that's just so you know that. Um, number five, I promise we will continue to live simply as we have since we were married. Uh, it is true. We don't buy new clothes. We don't have cable or satellite TV. Uh, we don't really eat out or take vacations. And we currently drive a 95 Ford truck that uh, struggles in every ride that I make. Um, but it is doing the job right now. So I'm thankful for that. But uh, yeah, we've never had a honeymoon, and I'm not complaining about it. I'm not even saying that we have a problem with the way we live. We don't. Um, I used to make $75,000 a year um, with Missa making $25,000 a year. So as a store manager for a drugstore, I was doing quite well. But I also just was asleep as they get. Wasn't paying attention to the world. Went to work at 5 or 6 in the morning. Came home at 5 or 6 at night. Watched the Giants game. Went to bed. And that was my life. And somehow all my money was spent. Um, I didn't have any savings or anything going on. And now uh, we're just a lot more frugal. 
and careful with everything that we spend and we will continue to do that um you know clothes can be washed when you're this age shoes you don't need new shoes every year or every five years or every 10 years so we will continue to live that way um i promise my videos will remain free uh, there is an option to charge people for videos or to be on some sort of subscription service and i won't do that and with the people that uh, help me out at patreon which you can go to patreon.com slash jaronism um, there's a lot of people on there that do little special extras for uh, people who donate and i've never done that because i don't want to incentive you know incentivize um, people hey you have to do this in order to get this um, I've thought I've started thinking lately about maybe doing something that's different than that, like a, a hangout with people who are on Patreon. Maybe we watch a movie together and uh, get high if you're interested in that. But um, it will never be anything where I hold back any kind of truth or any or I only tell people who I'm not into that. I don't understand that. Um, it's what the problem with this world is. And if you want to know what Jordan Maxwell said that upset me is he actually told us at the end that um, somebody had asked the question in the chat room on TFR of whether he thought it was too late for people. Um, and he actually went into this whole thing where he said that people can't handle the truth, they're not ready for the truth, and that's why these secret societies hold the truth back. And I think that that's a bunch of horseshit because people can't handle the truth because they've been lied to. And so I would never even say that, that uh, we don't know if people can handle the truth because you never told them the truth. And so that's why I um, probably won't be having him back on because anybody who says that has almost fallen into the same mindset that these uh, Freemasons and things have. Um, and I promise to never hold back any truth that we find. Another claim I've heard somebody make, and I don't remember if it was John LeBon or who, but somebody said, you know, what's going to happen at this International Flat Earth Convention um, are they going to hold back truth? And that's why, you know, if somebody asked me today, what are you going to talk about at the convention? I have no idea. And I wouldn't even think about it until a week before the event, because that's not what I'm, I'm not going to think about now, something that I'm going to say, because I'll say it tomorrow if I'm thinking about it now. I'm not going to, you know, if I found some new evidence in a NASA video, I'm not going to wait until the event to like release it. And maybe people would think that that's what I should do. Like, oh, no, well, it should be a cool event and there's people paying money to go there. So you well, then they're dealing with the wrong person. It's not what you're going to get from me. Anything I find, I'm going to repeat. I'm going to say I'm going to put out there, make a video, make one of these daily videos just to highlight it, because I think it's important. Um, another thing, and I won't mention the name, but there was a group that contacted me on Facebook that said, hey, will you come on a, a call with us? We do private um private hangouts where we discuss our findings and everything and i like was taken aback like what do you mean and they said well we don't like to put our stuff out there in public and i was pissed and and i do on one end understand why they do it the way they do because they don't want to deal with trolls and they don't want to deal with what they call people stealing their content well that's something i'm okay with doing that i i deal with trolls i deal with everything because i don't want to hold anything back that could help anybody else but i told them and i did go on their call and have a conversation with them and I just told them what I said what if something that you guys have been researching or discovered would have helped me in my research or would have saved me of going down a path that I went down and I said so to me I'm not a big fan of the way you're doing this because if I find something I put it out there in the hopes that maybe somebody else has been studying something and it rings a bell with them and maybe they can help draw a better picture for all of us that way and uh, so I'm not a big fan of anybody who's holding things back for any reason, and you won't catch me doing that. Um, I will say everything. Um, and so that's basically it. The end of this just said, to those of you who hate that we are challenging scientific facts and feel we are just morons, that's fine. Everyone is allowed their own opinion, but please understand that our opinion is equally valid. As we search to better form our opinions and understanding of the world, we have asked those who want to help by donating if they'd be kind enough to support us. They, like you, can review my videos and decide if I am worth their support. And if you have come to the conclusion that we are not worth your support, that's fine. Our videos are free. You don't have to donate a cent. You can even follow me or subscribe, or you can block me if you no longer wish to see my videos. All very simple. The way YouTube works is easy. Uh, the problem for us is, is that we have decided that NASA is not worth um, our support, and yet we are still required to give our money 
and our children are required to learn their facts in school, uh, even though we don't consider those things facts anymore. So this is uh, to all those people, Jed Skeptic and others who have said things um, like, Jerem, what's the difference? You tell us we don't have to list, watch your videos. Well, you don't have to watch NASA's videos. Well, what a joke that is that I'm not watching NASA's videos just because I want to. I'm watching NASA's videos because they are taking $52 million a day from the American public. Big difference. If I'm taking $52 million a day from the public, not by asking for it, but by force, by force taxation, then you have every right to question every single thing I do and to put everything I do under a microscope. I'm not doing any such thing. I'm not requiring money from anybody. I am asking people to review my videos and my content and decide for themselves. And if it's changed them or if it's helped them at all, then it'd be great if they could support me so I can do it more. And if they can't, then they can't. And if nobody supports me, then I will have to go back to selling books and doing everything we were doing before and uh, storage um, auctions. And, and that's fine by me that I uh, recognize the way the world works. And if you're providing content that people appreciate and like and is beneficial and they can see that you aren't telling lies, but you're actually reporting your findings, then they will respond um, in a positive way. And if not, then that means you're not doing something right. So people like Tim Osman are probably upset that they're not getting anybody to listen to them or they're not um, providing good enough information to get people to want to watch them. And that's why they've got, you know, 200 subscribers. Um, I put YouTube as a free platform. And if you have an opinion that you'd like to voice much like I do, you can simply make videos as well. If you would like to ask for support when making those videos, go right ahead. Um, and then I said, those who enjoy your videos or feel they are useful can support you if they want. The people we have a problem with are those who do not ask for money but are handling our tax dollars, or sorry, handed our tax dollars, which have been taken from us without our permission. NASA gets $52 million a day now, so we are digging deep and researching this agency as well as other institutions that may not be completely honest with the money that they're taking. The difference between us and them is, is that those who support us choose to do so when they want to do so, and they know what they are getting. That is certainly more than we can say for NASA, who gets $52 million a day and still can't provide a 24-7 live view of our home from space. So basically, that is the story. And again, people I've heard say, you know, oh, well, Jaron, you're saying that you wouldn't do videos for somebody donating money to you, but you're asking NASA to take a video of the Earth and why should you get to ask from them if other people can't ask from you? Again, clear, plain and simple. NASA is taking my money. And if I'm taking somebody's money, if I go to your house and I require that you give me $10, then I do believe that you have a right to tell me what I'm allowed to do. You do have a right to put your voice in and to say, well, Jaron, I think you should do a video on the Sphinx because I'm you're taking my $10. So shouldn't I have some say in what you do. And that's absolutely the case. However, if somebody is donating, if I'm donating $10 to NASA, if I just donate to them, then I don't think that I have a right to tell them what to do. But that's not what's going on with NASA. I am not just donating to NASA. I'm having it taken from me. And that is the case with SpaceX as well. Um, people can call them private all they want. Uh, look into the subsidies that Elon Musk has gotten that amount to, I think, $5 billion in subsidies. And so that is tax money. People think that his Tesla car company is um, is awesome and great. And the truth is that they lose $15,000 a vehicle. So for every car they sell, they're losing $15,000. Well, then how does the company stay in business? Well, because they get tax credits and they get subsidies, which are paid for by you and I, even though we don't have a Tesla car. Maybe you do. I don't. Um, but that's why they're able to stay in business, because the people who are paying taxes are actually allowing people who make $350,000 a year, which is the uh, average household income of somebody who owns a Tesla, um, which is allowing them to have these fancy cars that uh, don't need gas anymore uh, as much. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you as far as that goes. Um, and if you've not read this page, I thought it was good. This person on my Patreon, I did cross out his name, um, put a pretty good comment that I thought was made me think because it says, Jaron, I think you should definitely take 30 seconds to ask people to help and support you financially at the end of each video. You have 60,000 subscribers. If even 5,000 gave a dollar a month, you would have your bills covered and could spend more time doing what matters to most of us. Um, and I just thought that was interesting. I'd never thought about it that way, um, which he was certainly true. I started thinking, wow, geez, with 60,000 subscribers, if each person gave a dollar 
a month, um, think what I could do with $60,000. That's when you could, you know, do tests and travel to Antarctica and take these cruises and, and have interviews with high level people. Um, and I'm not saying that that's, it's a pipe dream. I understand that. I'm just putting it out there as a, an example of really what I think needs to happen in this arena somehow. Um, and I don't know how, you know, I don't want to ask people for, for money like that, but if, if we all did put our heads together and got some finances and some funding behind somebody, I'm not saying it has to be me by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I think that um, when you've got a bunch of people who are uh, making videos and trying their best, we're going to be in the same place five years from now if we can't get something going or making something um, splash. And that's why I appreciate um, Kyrie Irving and appreciate B.O.B., and appreciate Shaq and anybody who is um, Eddie, you know, Eddie Bravo, huge props to him um, because these guys are actually putting it out into the, to the mainstream and getting it in people's ears. And that's more than, uh, you know, than I can do, you know, and I know that I'm not um, claiming that I could ever get into the ears of a million people. Um, although I do have a video that almost hit a million. And <clears throat> as an example of people thinking that I make money on uh, my videos, almost half or a little bit more than half of my videos have been removed from um, monetization due to content. Um, it's controversial, so they don't give you um, that ability to monetize your videos. And then also many people think that because a, a video appears on my channel here somewhere that I make the money from it. And that's not true at all. If you happen to have, and you've seen many of my videos, I put tons of clips in my videos. Well, most times those get uh, content matched and then the person who matches the content even if my video is you know an hour two hours if there's just a 30 second segment of a um, Bill Maher or something like that that gets content that gets claimed by them so they make every penny so um, it's certainly not what people think um, that I'm making bank off of these ads this video here 996,000 so that's really cool um, just to think that something I made has almost a million views. Um, very cool. But this is one that uh, nobody's made a penny off of because they tell you you can't because I'm talking about 9-11 and the Pentagon and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was really cool, 996,000 um, views. So my first video will hit a million. But uh, certainly you know that most of my videos like this one here, 9-11 Truth, don't, any video like this immediately is removed from monetization anything like this, George Bush's video, which yeah, that's 500,000 views. And I believe that the going rate, or at least what they say, is that you make a dollar per thousand views, um, which would be super cool if I ever saw anything close to that, but that's not what you see. And again, the way that money works on YouTube, if you don't know, it's by people clicking on the ads. Well, think of all the people you know that are flat earth, um, content creators or flat earth video watching watchers do they click on any ads the, the answer is no that uh we're not we're not making videos for the right audience if people think that this is some and it's like joe rogan keeps saying that oh they're doing it for money they're doing it because they get these million views and that is complete and total nonsense because it's not the right crowd and what i've learned to do in just two years as far as making videos and i'm not saying i'm great by any stretch of the imagination but you get better you learn what you're doing. And when I do make videos, I think I do a pretty good job of um, making something that's at least fun to watch a little bit. And if I wanted to make money doing it, then I wouldn't be doing it in this realm. I would go somewhere where people click ads, like, I don't know, whatever else you want to think. And maybe it's, uh, that's why people who do videos on like beauty, um, like girls that do videos on beauty is a really great market because they're doing videos about makeup and they're doing videos about blush and everything else. And then those are the kind of viewers that click ads. When an ad for L'Oreal comes up or an ad for Macy's, whatever it might be, those are the people who are getting the kind of money that people are talking about when they think that YouTube makers, um, creators are making, you know, bank when they're certainly not. Um, it just depends on your particular brand or your particular niche and uh, Flat Earth is not one that makes um, a ton of money. And I actually did in a recent article here, um, I believe it's, yeah, this guy here wrote an article just as an example. Um, what's his name? His name is Andrew Pont, Pontbrand, or I don't know, Pontbrand. And he wrote an article in a, 
on the internet a few months ago where he basically said that the flat earth uh, the flat earth theory debunked the complete guide and let me shrink this back down and see if it works without compromising okay there we go and basically um i went through and answered all of his little objections but one of the funny things that he wrote um in here is that well just to go, go over this real quick first one thing he claims is that there is nobody who benefits from the flat earth idea so that it must not be a conspiracy and it must not be true um because nobody makes any money off of it which is classic um then he also says things like um if one was to a propose the flat earth theory is one such conspiracy then this lie would have to go back to the sumerians the greeks and the ancient egyptians so those are the kind of claims people are making online about the flat earth that now he's saying that the ancient egyptians believed in a sphere the ancient egyptians believed that the earth was flat so i mean you can't just say things like that but you can when you get a lot of readers and people who just are on a confirmation bias agree with you no matter what you say um also here so let's see here where did I say it? Then I gave him all these quotes. Um, but basically, he was saying that uh, we're doing it to make money. And so um, that's the reason why there's anybody making any videos about uh, the flat earth and that we're all doing it for a million a million views or something like that. That's what I was trying to find. Where does he say that? Um, yeah, here. So, oops, here. So he says... Um, the flat earth theory just doesn't seem to fit into an area of questioning. We agree the theory itself is interesting and many videos and explanations are fun and exciting. However, the massive distraction and misguided narrative created just amounts to a lot of time and energy wasted on a conspiracy that serves absolutely nobody unless you get millions of YouTube views on the theory you present. And later he says actually flat out that there are people who have millions of views and I told him to... Uh, Please provide evidence that there's somebody with a flat earth video that's got a million views. Um, it just doesn't happen like people think it does. And I told him, um, do you really think that any flat earth material is getting millions of views? Have you researched what YouTube actually pays? Uh, do you know that YouTube doesn't allow controversial content to be monetized? Do you know that people actually, actually have to click ads to make money for the creator? Um, because he obviously doesn't uh, know that or else he wouldn't make such claims. So... A lot of straw man arguments is a good article if you want to read it um, and a good retort by me. Um, I did point out here because he says again that um, they looked. We spent much time looking for a source of the who benefits question. In all honesty, there is no real culprit. In other words, the flat earth theory has grown immensely over the last year and a half, although it has been around in some form for hundreds of years. And not a single person can pinpoint a single source as to the perpetrators of the lie or the beneficiaries of it. This is a big problem for reference. See below. What a joke that somebody would make that claim. Um, I just told him, nice straw man. Now, no one has spoke about it. Or, uh, the who, the what, the how, or you haven't looked. Ever heard of knowledge is power? Is that bullshit or what? Of course it isn't. And the less you know, the better for them. And you are right. No one has benefited from all this. Let's see how the global space economy fared. And then I quote an article here from Parabolic Arc where you can see what the space economy makes. So we're not just talking about NASA now, but in 2014, the global space economy grew slightly more than 9%, reaching a total of $330 billion for the year, up from 2013's $302 billion. Uh, together, commercial space activities make up 76% of the global space economy, the industry as a whole. So you're talking about everything that space makes people as far as money. I mean, it is a clear, you know, uh, indication of who is benefiting from this. And just look at every astrophysicist, every cosmologist. They are the ones benefiting from it because if the truth came out, then their whole careers um, are in shambles and they're looked at as charlatans as they absolutely should be. Um, because this guy goes in and, and claims that um, there's, I mean, how can you say there's no money involved? Think of satellites. Like people are paying for satellite TV and GPS devices and being told that there's something in space going on that needs to go on for them to get that content. That's not what's happening at all. Um, it's all just fraud. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that article. And let me go back to the chat and see if there's anything I missed and then we'll be ending it. Um, so let's see here. Update on the Titanic video. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'm actually getting near done on that one. What happened was... That there was somebody who's like a main, I can't think of his name right now, but he's like a main Titanic researcher. 
And I had emailed him because I had a question about something he found and he didn't get back to me. And so I had made the video and I was almost done with it. And that's when I announced it'd be coming out. And then he did get back to me. And what he told me actually changed um, a good majority of that video. Um, the one that I had originally made, because basically what he found is hugely important into something that I thought was minorly important. And uh, yeah, that's around the Carpathia, which is the boat that was the first one on the scene. And so it kind of it finished my whole thought on it. It actually made everything else. Like I said, you take what people give you and you see if it matches your research and your. And so what he told me made me rethink the entire video. Not that the video would have been wrong. The video would have been right. It still is right. The problem with it was is that I put very little emphasis on something that I now think is hugely important to the story. And so I had to redo that. And so that'll be out soon. And by that, I mean um, probably within two weeks. Uh, it is an important video I want to do. I kind of went too fast on the Stonehenge one and got a lot of kickback for that. So I just don't want to treat it the same way. Um, see if there's any other, again, hopefully you're putting questions somehow in caps, um, so that I can find it as I'm scrolling through here. There's one. I just sent you a question and didn't get a response on ask. If, well, I don't mean, <laughs> you just sent me a question on ask.fm. I'm actually, uh, if you didn't realize currently doing a show live on YouTube. So, uh, I do get back to you on, uh, ask.fm, but certainly not when I'm doing a live show. I'm talented, not that quite talented. Um, a recent, what is about this recent trip to Antarctica of 10 grand? I'm curious what you think. I sent a link in your ask. I sent a question and didn't get a response on ask.fm. It's about this recent trip to Antarctica for 10 grand. Um, I've actually looked into a trip to Antarctica, um, and they're not that cheap, but, uh, you know, usually you get about 20 or 30 grand for, uh, a trip. But uh, if you can go down there in December, January, February, I think those are the only three months that will really work, and you can get below the Arctic Circle, and you can observe or videotape the sun, I think it's hugely important. Um, I do have questions about, and people may think, you're crazy. But uh, believe me, it's not that crazy. If this is the conspiracy that we're saying it is, and if it is the biggest secret that there ever was, which it would be, well, then I don't put anything past them, and I mean even like faking the sun. And the reason I say that is because it, they actually have a patent for a fake sun. There's actually ones online. I'll show you actually right now. You can just search uh, fake sun. And they've got these huge contraptions of um, basically lights. Uh, where's a good image of it? And a lot of people have had questions when they're filming the sun that it looks like a hexagon, which is this is... If you can see this image here, this is the hexagon of lights. And we already know that NASA can lift 8,000 pounds with their balloon technology. So is it out of that out of the realm of possibilities that in order to fake the how many people are down there working? 100, 200, let's say 1,000 to fake the 1,000 people into thinking that there's a 24 hour sun that you put up a balloon you put it up 150,000 feet. It's got a big bright light on it and the thing goes around. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. I certainly would never say that. And if you, if you're willing to say that, then you, then you don't understand the implications of the flat earth. You don't understand that they would do anything to protect this lie. And by anything, I mean, putting up a bunch of lights. That's not a, you know, that's not that uh, crazy to think. And that would kind of be something that they wouldn't want to be filmed because probably with, uh, you know, techniques as far as kind of like the whole idea of what I do with the photo forensics. Um, if you were to put that through some sort of filter, maybe you could find out if the sun half the day is the same as the other one. Um, just looking up here, artificial sun. There was a better image of the one that they're building, this one. So check this out. This is an artificial sun. Um, so if you think that that idea is crazy, well, I don't think it's as crazy as you think. That this is something that they've made. It's got all these lights and these uh, parabolic reflectors. Look at all these images of it. So what are they doing this for? Who knows? You know, look how big this thing is. So I'm just saying that uh, even for me at this point, if I went down to Antarctica and saw a sun that went in a circle around me, um, I would need to... 
take my video camera and my images and my and my regular camera photographs and really put those through an extensive um, review to make sure that the sun doesn't change, that it is the same sun all day. And I would need to see that for myself. I, I just don't uh, think that just because somebody went down there and took a video of the sun going around them. And you may think that's crazy, but I think that then you don't understand uh, how big this lie is. It's something they can never just admit. And you should have seen enough things around you to realize when something isn't true. And the fact that they don't take videos of the earth, take photos of the earth, that they're all composites, that we didn't go to the moon. Once you realize all that, then you realize they can't get far enough away from the earth to take an image. So if they can't get far enough away, why was it such a big deal to lie and say we went to the moon? Why was it such a big deal to show us images of the ball earth? Um, why was it such a big deal to teach us all that flat earth was dumb, that it was an ancient desert wandering belief? Um, when you start looking into it and you see, hey, flat earth's got some merit. It's got some interesting points. The globe earth certainly seems like it's got some problems. Well, just put yourself in their situation that you need this lie to be told. What better way than to teach one is scientific and supported by evidence and the other one is ancient desert wanderers who didn't know what they were talking about, who were idiots. And why would you make the idea of a flat earther be the, the biggest cut low that there is? You know, the biggest thing that you can say to demean somebody is to call them a flat earther. What better way to hide the truth than to turn the truth into the most ridiculous claim ever made? That's what it seems like they've done. And if you understand all that, then you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. Um, Let's see if there's any more questions before I bow out. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who's donated. I see some more people. Uh, Dane, thank you so much. And Morgan Ellis, I think I already announced you, but thank you so much. You guys are awesome. And just uh, checking. So the last chance anybody's got any questions, I see one there. Oh, come back. Uh, shouldn't the moon's elliptical orbit offer a 2% rotation visible as its rotational quarters are not in parallel with the Earth in all directions? D d isn't that what the whole idea of lunation is? Doesn't it, um, doesn't it show a little bit more of each side? I'm not sure that we only see half the side, So I do, if that's what you're asking. Um, but I have big problems with the moon's orbit anyway being only the 5% uh, incline, and yet we see... The Epic camera, the Discover camera, is filming the moon, but it only shows it maybe twice a year. The other times they say it's passing too high or too low. Well, I don't think that's possible in a 5% um, incline that you could be out of sight of a camera that's sitting a million miles from Earth in between the Earth and the sun. But uh, it's something I still got to look into fully. And I'm going to check anything else here. Question, what is preventing you from starting a movement? You have a cult following southern california meetup planetarium night um i don't know what he means by that i don't have a cult following whatever that means but uh i what is preventing me from starting movement i don't i don't want to start any movement i just want the truth and so all i'm looking for is a way to um, better get that proven because it isn't easy this is a deception it's hard for people to understand for me now it's it's simple at this point for me um, I can no longer look at the idea of the ball earth in blackness of space and not laugh because it's it's a laughable image. It is not a picture. It's not a photograph. It is a digitally constructed composite image. Um, they have convinced us all that we live on that ball in the blackness of space, which makes no sense at all. Gravity has never been proven in any way. And if you think it has, then please provide me the evidence that Gravity has been proven. You can't even do the equation of gravity um, to prove it. It's, it's just nonsense. And they've convinced you that that ball of water is sitting there in space. It's, it's laughable. Um, let me see. I'm going to look up Earth photos just so we can all see it together. Um, you know, this is something that they claim is, is real, that this is what is sitting out in the blackness of space, this ball... This is water. This is water. The water is just sitting on the ball, yet gravity is the weakest force. I mean, does this make any sense to anybody? And, and if it does, well, congratulations. To me, it no longer um, is my reality. 
that I've never seen this ball. I've never, um, the people who take pictures of it are liars. Uh, they have lied about, and if you watch the Joe Rogan special with him talking with, um, with Eddie Bravo, um, you know, he's talking about NASA, like there's some great organization and that they're different. Now he says, the guys who lied about the moon landing are different. They're different people now, but it's the same organization. And it's obviously a lie that is continued. This is not like NASA told us last year, hey, by the way, we lied about going to the moon. Well, you know what? Then I could see us all saying, well, they're telling the truth now. They, they did tell everybody they didn't go to the moon. They did tell everybody that they can't go har farther than 400 miles away from the Earth. That's a different story completely. Unfortunately, they are continuing the lie, not so much just continuing it, but in order to be considered scientific, in order to be considered smart, to be an intellectual, to be allowed in the circles where these men are talking, you need to believe that we went to the moon. It's required to be in their circle. Well, that's why I see it as a complete and total deception, and I don't want anything to do with liars. So, yeah, these images here, um, this is water, 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 water. And um, you can believe that uh, there's an atmosphere around this. Remember, we got this atmosphere that it's connected somehow to the vacuum of space, but the atmosphere stays there. Uh, they tell you that the atmosphere moves along with the Earth as the Earth spins, which, okay, but then you say, okay, well, then we have to think of air like a liquid, right? Or we can consider it a gas, whatever you want to consider it. If it's stuck to the Earth as the Earth spins, then think about as high as you go up, 10, 20, 30,000 feet, that atmosphere has to be stuck to the Earth. And if you're at the equator, you're moving 1,000 miles per hour, meaning all the air above it, all the way up to the Kármán line, is also moving at 1,000 miles per hour. But just to the north of that, say above Florida, well, that atmosphere is only moving at 800 miles per hour. But yet I can go outside and look at the clouds and see clouds going in three or four different directions. Um, so how is that possible? It doesn't make any sense. And those are the kind of things that should be globe killers. You know, they talk about things, oh, the, the southern star is a flat earth killer. Great. Fantastic for you to, to think that. Um, you don't think that the sun being 93 million miles away and a million times bigger than the earth is a globe killer? Um, you don't think that... The whole idea of the atmosphere, the spinning Earth that's never been proven, the fact that the Foucault's pendulum switches during eclipses, um, the fact that this is all random, yet the moon and the sun are the same size in the sky and can allow for eclipses. If you don't think those are globe killers and scientism killers, well, then you are simply using your confirmation bias to love the things that you want to be true and hate the things that you don't want to be true. And that's certainly not uh, the way you find the truth. So, yeah, this is kind of like the cartoon picture I'm talking about that's just funny. Um, think of it, the emptiness of space, yet the huge Earth, which is pretty much a solid item all the way through. They say there's a liquid iron core, which somehow creates magnetism, even though we know that if you melt any metal, it no longer contains its magne magnetic properties. So how is the middle of the Earth magnetic? Nobody knows that. And the whole idea of this huge rock is held up in space, by the sun come on i mean it just makes no sense and so for me it's easy all right question somebody just put the word question thank you for that if nasa turns out to be an undersea internet cable think tank are they wrong if nasa turns out to be an undersea internet cable think tank are they wrong yeah they, they're liars um, hopefully that's what you meant but yes they're very wrong question have you looked into google x lately jaron the moon contest was supposed to be up by december yeah, I, I have to go back and look at that again. But the, again, it's the same as Virgin Galactic. That uh, Why would I pay attention to them anymore after they've already proven themselves to be absolute liars? And that's what Google Lunar X Prize is. You can go back and search, and I'll just do it real quick here so you can see. A great thing to do is just search Google. So I'm putting Lunar, Lunar X Prize, and then change your date. So I'm putting Lunar X Prize, but now I'm going to change my tools anytime, go to custom range, and put in a date. And go back to, let's go 1990, I don't even know when they started that, to 2009. Oops. So put in a date and just find the information you can about um, these things. And you'll see that, uh, you know, different companies that are trying for it. Here's the European Lunar Exploration Association. It's a group of friends and relatives with engineering backgrounds who have gathered to compete for the Lunar X Prize. 
the teams whose ages span from 16 to 60. So this is a team that started, but this is the kind of research you can do to prove to yourself that this is all deception because when you go and find these websites, um, sometimes they've changed. You know, like for instance, this website could be a, a Lunar X Prize from recently, but this is just a team here and it's talking about what they're doing and what's going on. And you can do this for anybody. Again, look at, we talked about Virgin Galactic, right? So put in Virgin Galactic instead and change your search dates to something in the past. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is 1990 to 2009. Um, and basically we can go through here. Uh, let's see, a brief history of, that's an older one. Um, this one here, Virgin Galactic unveils Spaceship 2 interior concept. This is from 2006. Um, Virgin Galactic goes stark raving bonkers, whatever that means. But anyway, when you search this way, you can find out uh, a lot because what you're basically doing is limiting your search to just the past. And one of the best things you can do is just go to NASA Discovers and you'll laugh because basically they discover the same thing every two years. Uh, and people just don't realize it. They just completely forget about it or something. Um, but usually you'll find out, okay, so Martian methane reveals the red planet is not a dead planet. You'll find all the time that it says that NASA discovers, uh, let's put water on Mars, which is something that we just heard about recently, right? So there shouldn't be anything on here. NASA spacecraft confirms Martian water. Mission extended. This is 2008. Mm -hmm. Yet they, you still look it up today, and they re have they really discovered water? What, you know, what? But this is the kind of thing they can get away with. Found it. Ice on Mars. Science mission director, it says so. Science at NASA. Mars water discovered. Tasted by lander. 2008 Wars, water on mars the enterprise mission 2002 mm. cnn nasa liquid water once on mars 2004 poof water ice found on mars so this is the kind of nonsense that if you can read this jed skeptic all you guys if you read this and you just pass it off well then why would we listen to anything you say that you are allowing liars to lie to your face and are going around promoting them, going around talking about how great they are. Um, I certainly don't. I give these people no credit at all for being the foolers of humanity. And to keep put, rolling this stuff out every two years and tell us that something else NASA found. Now they, and they, you know, look at lettuce, planets. you know, and planets. Let me look at NASA grows lettuce. Um, we know that they did that just recently, right? And the guys were eating it for the first time. Um, but you will find where it says that they've already been doing it. Um, let's see, lettuce grown aeroponically from seed. I don't know what that even means. Um, space station. Space station. Maybe, yeah. Growing plants for NASA uh, about lettuce. But, uh, you know, if I had more time, I'd show you some of this stuff. But greenhouses for Mars. I just put NASA grows lettuce. On, on space station. Let me see. We're going to put on ISS and see uh, NASA Greenhouse from Mars. Fresh ideas. Maybe it's because I went back too far. I went 2009. I know that we've seen some from like 2004. Here's some right here. To boldly grow where no one has grown before. Um, January 2004, President Bush announced his intention to return humans to the moon by 2020. Yeah, that's going to happen. And in 2006, NASA announced its plans to set up a manned lunar outpost by 2024. So this is the kind of things that they say that no, don't ever happen. This is, you know, go look it up now and see if NASA is planning to have a lunar outpost by 2024. They just say things and then they let you read it and then you believe it. And it's so far in the future that you just forget it. And then they can say it five years later. And again, everybody forgot that they already said it and they just do it again. And it keeps recycling the same stories over and over again. I mean, think when Mark, no, Scott Kelly was up in the ISS for a year. They said they were doing this study to see the effects of a human on a human who's been in space, but they've been up there for the ISS itself has been 17 years. So how do you, you after 17 years, then you decided to do this research? Makes no sense at all. And uh, maybe in one of these upcoming shows, we'll just watch sci uh, these so-called scientists and astronauts tell us what science they're doing on the ISS. They can never say any particular experiment besides the one blonde girl who says that she mapped the genome, which I don't even believe. Um, okay, I'm checking if there's any other questions that I got to go.
Taryn, do you mean to say that you can see these comments? Are you really live? Good question. Yes. What didn't you like that Jordan Maxwell said at the end? Uh, as I said, Jordan Maxwell, um, he just said that people are not ready for the truth. And I disagree because I don't think you can say that because they've never been given the truth. So you can't just tell people, well, humans aren't ready for the truth. They don't want the truth. Well, yeah, maybe not now because they've been built up on a story of lies for hundreds of years or even if it's 50 years, even if it's just people's lifetimes, their entire life has been a lie. So, yeah, they may not be ready for the truth because you've lied to them. But that doesn't mean you don't tell people the truth. You you got to tell them the truth. And I, they're not doing that. Um, this person says Earth's atmosphere sticking to the ball is a globe killer. It makes no sense whatsoever. Right. Earth's atmosphere sticking to the ball. Globe killer makes no sense whatsoever. I, I don't know if you're saying that uh, the fact that it does that is a globe killer or if you're saying that makes no sense that I said that. It's an absolute globe killer. Even in elementary school, they teach kids if you threw a paper airplane north and it kept going, it would end up east. Yeah, you mean because of the so-called Coriolis force? I don't know, Nate, you'll have to tell me what you mean by that. I don't really get it. Jaron, how do comets work on Flat Earth? Not really sure. I can't tell you. Um, what do you think of Judy Wood regarding 9-11? Have you looked at her research? Real quick, my feeling on 9-11 is we all know that it wasn't as we were told. We all know that we were lied to by the government. Um, so that should be all that we need. And instead, we've got people arguing between each other about whether there was no planes or there was planes or whether people died or whether they didn't whether there was no floors or there was floors or thermite or no thermite. And that is exactly what the powers that be want. Brilliant job on their part again, rather than people turning and looking at the government and saying, you lied, you perpetrated this on people to uh, give us this whole idea of this false boogeyman of terrorism. And you are the ones terrorizing people. And it's not a war on terror. It's a war of terror. And it's of by the same people who are telling us that they need we need them to protect us when they're the ones uh, doing all these events. So th it's not even worth my time. I read Judy Wood's book. Well, I only read about half, but um, I don't see a problem with most of it. She seems like she does great research. But again, I tend to think that thermite was involved. But what difference does that make what I think or what anybody else thinks? Because it's just going to cause arguments between people who think they've done research that has led them to a different opinion. Well, that's great, but our collective understanding is clearly we were lied to, so drop everything else because it doesn't matter. And I don't see that happening from people. They just want to keep arguing about whether there was anybody died or five people or 100 or 3,000. And da, 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 da. All right, well, I said it would be quick, so I'm going to end it now, and hopefully we can do this. Like I said, uh, I'm not going to do it probably tomorrow. Maybe I will in the evening, but check out Globebusters at noon Pacific um, we have uh, Brother Sanchez on the show, so it should be fun. And then I'll see you again soon. So I do appreciate you guys watching and appreciate all the donations so much. You guys are awesome. And we will be talking to you real soon. So take care of each other. Don't lie to each other. And open up your mind because there's truth inside. Till next time, guys, this has been Jaronism. Peace. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you are uh, planning to fly when? Uh, when, we're, when we're ready. You know? We'll fly when we're ready. Okay? Don't worry about who you give your money to. We take your money and we fly when we are ready. You no, know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that's never been done before, right? We're trying to open space up to you and to you. Yeah, listen, to by you. the way, yeah. And I'm, all I'm... you. I mean, that's what we want to do. <laughs> who wants to go to space? Who wants to go to space? which is something they don't even claim they're going to do anymore um, because they can't get that high. And, of course, we should know that. You should know how the planes operate, how they work, how they fly. And once you get up that high, um, there's no more atmosphere. And if there's no more atmosphere, well, then everything changes. How do you steer a vehicle without atmosphere to steer against? And there's just no way to do what they are claiming they can do. And in the times they've tried to even get up to a certain level, the plane breaks up into a million pieces because... Well, that's what happens when you <laughs> are trying to do something that you can't do. So let's continue on. 
and, and it's hard, and we got to do it right. So we'll, we'll fly when we're ready. But soon. Soon. Yeah. Uh, well, in space exploration, soon is less than 10 years, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, way sooner than that. Way yeah, sooner. Way sooner. Now. Way sooner than that. And the, uh, what we're going to be going over here in a few seconds is how many times they've told us exactly when they'll be flying. Now, if I were going to buy a ticket, yeah. what would it set me back? Well, for you, Bill. <laughs> um, no, our, our price is uh, $250,000. All right. Quarter million, and we fly in space. Yeah, what I like to say is um, right now NASA's buying tickets from the Russians for about, I don't know, what is it, $80 million each? Which is classic. So if you don't know that, I think it's hugely important. NASA had these space shuttles. They had six of them. Two of them blew up, so they had four left. And all four have been retired and put into museums. And now NASA pays $81 million a seat to fly on Soyuz rockets to the ISS, which, again, I'm not saying I believe that. But I do believe that the money transfers hands, and it's all just a money-stealing um, system. But $81 million per seat, you know, that's times three people. If they're sending three up, well, usually they only send one or two Americans. And that is ridiculous because we had a space shuttle. We had a craft that could fly from Earth into orbit, connect with the ISS, and they just got rid of them. So if anybody believes that horse stuff, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. There's no possible way that any company would ever do that. How could it have cost that much money to repair whatever the issues were with the shuttle? wouldn't have cost more than $81 million a person to keep those things going, but instead they're now in museums. So $250,000, it's a lot of money, obviously. But we're going to bring that cost down over time. Uh, now, you had some trouble. Yeah, yeah. We, we, had, a, we had a test flight accident, and, uh, you know, space is, space is hard. And uh, it's... it's um, but, yeah, the guys uh, basically broke, the, not, not on and of himself, but uh, the state of New Mexico which is one of the poorest states that there is, period. Uh, they gave him the entire $183 million to build Spaceport USA, so which is a lot of money, and he promised them thousands of jobs and all these celebrities would be coming by to purchase tickets and stay in nearby hotels and spend money in gift shops. And, of course, nothing like that has come to fruition yet. Uh, he's also started Virgin Money, and I'm going to play a video now for you and wonder if you agree or don't agree that uh, there's definitely some occult symbolism behind this video. So let's check that out. We've come a long, long way over the last 40 years with a simple aim of making things better. And now our quest takes us into banking. Virgin Money, 40 years of better, now in a bank. <laughs> Did you catch the end there? I wonder if I can show that again. Uh, the hot air balloon was going up, but it hit a glass ceiling and kind of kept trying to get out of the glass ceiling by bouncing, but uh, couldn't quite get out. So I thought that was interesting. Um, also, I wanted to just kind of point out, you know, what this guy has done or who he is, basically. And Richard Branson is um, an English business uh, magnate, if you will, an investor, philanthropist. 
He founded the Virgin Group, which controls 400 companies. Um, he was knighted at Buckingham Palace uh, for his service to entrepreneurship, for his work in retail and music and transport. And he's one of the most prominent figures in British culture. Uh, in January 2016, for ticket on this death trap, which is basically, if, would you ever get on something if uh, somebody told you, oh, yeah, we ran this particular ride at Disneyland four times and only four people have died? Doubt anybody would ever get on that ride again. Um, yet he's supposedly still selling tickets. Pretty crazy. So, yeah, basically this is the whole trip. The whole trip takes like 30 minutes. $250,000 is a joke. For that much money, you'd be able to build yourself a, a, a balloon that could take you equal height, and you'd be by yourself, and you constructed the whole thing. I mean, you'd probably spend a lot less than a quarter of a million dollars. And if he has sold 700 tickets, that's $175 million dollars for something he's never proven even once can be done. So pretty crazy. Um, let's look at also, and we'll bring this up. We're going to watch a little segment of Bill Nye. And I did want to put this up there because I thought it was hilarious. Uh, you can't quite see as low as I can. But um, if you have been watching Bill Nye's recent show and seen the blow up around uh, this whole stupid Bill Nye wrecks the world program, um, the my sex junk section was the worst thing I've ever seen. But as of yesterday, I thought the thumbs up and thumbs down was hilarious. It is, and this is yesterday, so I'm sure it's changed by today, but it has 1,514 thumbs up to 89,293 thumbs down. So that's a 89 to one, um, thumbs down versus thumbs up ratio, which is pretty hilarious. So what we're going to be watching now is, this is George T. Whitesides. He is the CEO of Virgin Galactic. Again, he came from NASA where he was the uh, deputy administrative head and, uh, you know, second basically in charge to Charles Bolden before he came over. And what we're going to be watching is a conversation that he had with Bill Nye on the show. I just want you to watch this guy and see if you see what I see. He's an, He looks like a villain. He's an absolute... Uh, he's got this smirk on his face, so let's watch that. We're going to put it into the, um, eh, I'll put it in the smaller screen probably. So we'll bring that up and go ahead and have a listen. Resources and Dr. Michelle Thaler from NASA itself. So the guy we're looking at is here on the left. Um, just watch the smirk on his face. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for taking the time. We're living at an extraordinary time. Absolutely. Where space exploration is being done by governments, and it's being done by you guys. So, George, let's start with you. You want to sell tickets. Yeah, we've sold about 700. So tell This little smirk just drives me crazy. I mean, this guy looks like he would steal from your wallet right in front of your face and, and just smile about it. Oh, so your company is Virgin Galactic, right? Yeah, yeah, With Richard the... Branson Space Company. Yeah, yeah, it's Richard Branson Space Company. You've heard of it. Oh, that one. Listed Branson's estimated net worth at $5.2 billion. Uh, no small sum at all. His grandfather, the Right Honorable Sir George Arthur Harwin Branson, was a judge of the High Court of Justice and a privy counselor. Um, so he definitely comes from a I guess a family of nobility, if you will. Uh, he did start his record business, as I'm sure you know all about that, uh, Virgin Records, which he ended up selling, but then uh, acquired a bunch of other businesses and has gone into healthcare. He owns Virgin Healthcare and also uh, has some trains. So if you saw in that last segment, the trains uh, going around, he purchased a bunch of trains in the UK. Um, but basically, the thing I want to be talking about is the orbital space launch system or the whole idea behind Spaceport USA and Virgin Galactic, which is basically uh, told people that he's going to be selling tickets to space. But really what it is is just a parabolic flight. Um, this craft will take off, if it ever happens, and then we'll release a, a rocket-powered craft from beneath it. And we'll see, let me see if I can bring up this video of the actual flight plan. So this is the Virgin Galactic flight plan, uh, what they expect to happen. I'm going to turn down this volume here so I can talk. So basically this is the, uh, the, you know, the mothership as they call it. A lot of occult symbology throughout this whole thing that they do. 
And if you want to know how successful it is to start, um, this company was founded in 2004, so we're looking at 13 years. Uh, but he started talking about it in 98. So we're almost at 20 years now when he was discussing it. And basically he's been talking about uh, sending these people. At first it was supposed to be at uh, 350,000 feet. Um, but now they've scaled that way back. But like I said, you go up, it drops you out, then it shoots you up into so-called space, which would have to be above the 60 mile mark, which is the Kármán line. Um, but I don't think that they even claim that they're going to do that anymore. There is quite a few people who have asked for their money back and luckily got it. Um, because basically he now claims that they have 700 people who have purchased, um, seats on this flight. And if that is true, and if anybody from Virgin Galactic is listening, I challenge you to please uh, go ahead and, and release that list of people who have paid you, because I tend to doubt that uh, 700 people have given somebody who's never proven a thing uh, $250,000. Um, but getting back to how successful this is, he has so far done four powered flights. So we're talking 20 years. He's done four powered flights, and he's killed murdered people are dead four people so in four powered flights you've got four dead people uh, that is not a good rate and i cannot see somebody giving him two dollars let alone two hundred and fifty dollars uh two hundred fifty thousand dollars to get it Ignition sequence start. Three, two, one. Houston, we have a problem. We have a problem. We got to go on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. What you're seeing here is a mirage. 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 <laughs> What's going on, everyone? It's Jaron Ism back with another video for you today, tonight, or this morning, wherever you might be. It's a live video, so thank you for joining me for what I hope to be the start of something long-lasting and beneficial. My hope is to start doing a daily show, maybe an hour in length. This way I can cover more topics. So I still want to do my more featured videos, so my videos will still be coming. But when I have some time, um, I think that I want to keep these short, and this way it covers... You know, my list is growing of videos I want to do, and at this point I realize I'll never be able to do them all. So I figure the easiest way to do this would be to go live daily. Can't tell you a time yet because I'm not really sure, but uh, if you have any suggestions, you may leave that in the comment section if you've you know got a time that works for you. I don't know, I'm trying to figure out how to do this all, so we shall see. But thank you if you're in the chat room for joining me, or if you're watching this some other time, thank you for watching appreciate that a ton and um, I hope that I can take some questions maybe at the end of the show but we'll see how each one goes but for now this is just the first of what I hope to be many and today's topic is going to be on Virgin Galactic I'm sure you know who they are that's Richard Branson's company and so Richard Branson is um, like I said the owner of the Virgin Galactic and he also has a CEO, and if you don't know who that is, his name is George Whitesides, George T. Whitesides. And George uh, was the former uh, deputy or head deputy uh, behind Charles Bolden at NASA. So that's an interesting little case. But we're going to start out talking about Richard Branson. Uh, the guy is a piece of work. If you need to know, you know what kind of exciting things are going on over at Spaceport USA, He's doing things like scaling the wall, drinking a bottle of champagne. Um, you can find him online picking up many women for some reason and touching women, just being a strange guy altogether. But he is rich. And is he using his riches in the right way? Well, that's up to you to decide. He is definitely, like I said, a strange individual. Uh, here we see him with uh, Al Gore. Um he is a big pusher on this whole idea of climate change, so if that tells you something about him, it definitely tells me something about him. 